Hey there, and welcome to CE5BoardNotes.com. This is Mikhail Francher, and uh, welcome to another part of the 152 and U series. A quick primer into your plane systems. Like what we talked about, the POH, or the 152 POH is always going to be your main resource, especially when it comes to check rides. But we thought of a way to, I guess, make the whole systems process easier, as well as describe some specific things a bit more. All right, the, at the end of the day, we just want to simplify this whole process for any new students or for, ever, or for anybody who's trying to review their 152 systems. So let's move on ahead. We have crossed over the airplane familiarization. We've done the flight controls, landing gear. Now we are over by the brake system. Now the brake system itself is nothing too complicated. It's one of the easier ones to explain. And when... I give this to new students specifically, I want them to think about a DJ or somebody who would scratch records. I know this time and age, it's a bit dated, but uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, I, I think uh, record players or DJs, they all have the same concept where you have a spinning record over here, you know, that plays music, but if you want to make that scratching sound specifically, right, the wut the wut yeah, that stuff. Um, what the DJ will do is just put a bit of pressure over on the record player or on the disc, and that's going to create that sound. That friction is what we want. Because if we make this record player vertical, that's going to be this, that's going to be this break disc over here. And the DJ or the amount of pressure that they're putting, we are going to be putting this onto here. So essentially, this brake disc, it's going to be connected over to the tires, all right? So when this thing spins, this thing spins as well. However, if you want the spinning to stop, right? If you want the tire to stop, you are going to make this output piston thing move over here and via the brake pad, add some additional pressure over to the brake disc. Adding enough pressure or a sufficient amount of pressure will make the whole disc stop. And essentially, that's how the brakes work. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to the Know Your 152 section. Now, these are the things you can find on the POH. And when it comes to a checkride, these are the things that you're definitely going to have to know and the th what you have to tell them, essentially. And uh, starting off with a single disc brake. Single disc brake means there is only one brake disc on each of the main landing gears. Now there are two landing gears, if we're gonna go ahead and do, these are landing gears are the main wheels over here, and there's one on each of the tires. You know, you have the left and the right tire, and it would each have a sin single disc brake. Hydraulically actuated, meaning it uses hydraulic fluid. Hydraulic fluid is going to be the red brake fluid that we have, and it's all based on the concept of it being non-compressible. Meaning, if you put a specific amount of pressure, like, you know, 1 PSI here, you're going to get 1 PSI of pressure over here. All right, so it doesn't compress. Whatever amount of pressure is the same pressure that is going to be enacted upon the brake pad. All right, this is why we like non-compressible fluid. This is why we use hydraulic fluid. And the master cylinder, or there would be a master, master cylinder by the brakes, used for primary control, right? Uh, hydraulic lines connected to brakes as well. We'll talk about the master cylinder over here. And this diagram, you don't necessarily have to memorize. Um, it's just a visual on how to understand it, I guess. So the master cylinder, from what I understand, this is going to be on the left side of the cockpit, on the left seat, and this is going to be the right seat. But regardless, the master cylinder is where you keep all that hydraulic fluid. This is where you add the fluid. This is also where you measure the fluid. So once you press the brakes, that's going to make a certain amount of fluid come down, run through all these lines, these hydraulic lines, and run through the other cylinders over at this side. Okay? And from there, it just really follows the lines all the way down. If your plane has a parking brake, and most of them do, what it does is that it just locks the amount of fluid coming in here. So no matter how much you press your brakes or depress your brakes, the fluid 
or the hydraulic fluid kept on these lines will be kept constant. We like to do that because if you release the brakes over this side and this side accidentally, these things will still stay still. From there, the fluids go through here and go directly to the disc. So like what we're seeing over in this diagram, it really just goes directly over to the disc. So nothing too complicated. These are going to be the main gears, and uh, yeah, so with the pressure plate and the back plate, the brake disc, uh, we'll just go over to this area, which is a quick diagram of the brakes, where essentially with the hydraulic fluid, right, coming in through here, if you press on the brakes, for example, that's going to increase the amount of fluid here. What that does is that it pushes this output piston and pushes the brake pad onto the disc itself. So if you want to brake, if you want to put a tiny amount of brakes, this thing only goes like this, and it only gives a certain amount of pressure over this side. So that's just if you want to slow down. But if you want to do a hard brake, for example, what that's going to do is pump in as much fluid as it can, and really tries its best to stop the rotation of this brake disc. Because keep in mind, right, this whole thing is connected to a tire. If you want it to stop spinning, you have to stop the spinning over by this section, right? This brake disc is the most important section of your brakes. Now, if I do my pre-flight, for example, and I see that the brake disc itself is looking a bit thin, my rule specifically is if you have a quarter coin, right? The width that it has on the coin itself, I can't really draw coins, but the width of that coin has to be approximately the same, if not less than the brake disc. If the diameter of the brake disc is less than a quarter coin, that means you have to bring it in for checking. Right? That, that's too thin. Essentially, uh, what the DP is kind of, expecting from me is to explain that it is a single disc, like what we said, one disc per brake, hydraulically actuated brake. When we say hydraulically actuated, once again, that means it uses hydraulic fluid. And very important, this hydraulic fluid is red. And at no point are you supposed to see any kind of leak down on the bottom of the brakes, on the ground, or on the tire. If you see red, red brake fluid or any kind of red fluid anywhere, stop the flight. All right? Make sure somebody checks that. Because not enough fluid over by this area may give you the possibility of not having enough brake pressure to stop the brake disc in the case of an emergency or you know, operation. So uh, just to reiterate, single disc hydraulically actuated brakes we have the red, the red brake fluid, not supposed to leak. Make sure the brake disc is more than a quarter's worth diameter. And uh, yeah, it really is the pressure you're just putting in the brake disc that what allows the brakes to work. All right, so if you do have any questions, just go ahead and let us know over by cfiboardnotes.com. And um, even just down in the comments, you can see this whole document as well as many of other many of our other notes over by the website. And um, don't hesitate to drop us any type of question. All right, we'd love to help you guys out. All right, so good luck, and we will see you guys next time.